My old father's teenage days were spent in 1917, listening to grown men talking about the cursed English spleen. They spoke about the GPO and Ireland's heart was sore, but the death of our own leader stung him to the very core. It was early in his youthful years, a rebel street did show, hearing men make solemn promises the British to overthrow. They would sacrifice both life and limb, a republic to define. And many's the Irish volunteer died sadly in his prime. My father's house, built by his dad, was solid and first rate. The front was finished in mortar dash, on the back hung a cladding slate. The roof was covered with killaloos, the windows slid up and down. And the floor inside the big hall door <coughs> lay tiles in sandbelt brown. For to finish off this house he built, the granddad couldn't wait. To fit a brass lock to the door on a solid brass lock plate. He paid a fortune for this lock, for he knew it would be secure. It took Lucky Smith a good two days for her to fit it to the door. <laughs> My granddad was a red dice who supported his home rule bill. He wore a stiff starch coloured shirt and a bowler hat as well. But his politics were old and stale, home rule was not yet won. And Ireland now was changing fast. And was time the Brits were gone. My uncle Mike worked for the government collecting poor law rates. He hid his takings in a box marked Willow Pattern Plates. For well he knew the danger his takings would tempt men who were desperate to fund the cause and cared not from where it came. Behind the scenes, two teenage boys were hatching out a plot. For to rob their brothers, poor laureates, making sure not to be called. But soon they found that he, like them, supported the rebel cause and agreed to help them rob himself and to hell with England's law. <laughs> well, this took a blow for Ireland then, when Grandad went to bed. And to stave off police suspicion, they staged a big break-in instead. Then the blame would shift to the highwaymen seen lately round Kilmore. And with foul of four thought and mean intent, they attacked the big front door. <laughs> with hatchet bars and hammers too, in a hurried mode did wield. But Grandad's big brass lock and lock was proven slow to yield. A sledgehammer was then secured, then a stick of dynamite, and according to what me dad told me, there was some awful biting that night. <laughs> With <laughs> poor granddad was blown out of bed and called out to God for help. Me father grabbed the poor law box, but he broke the willow delve. A blow was struck for Ireland, though, cruel England to frustrate. But sacrificed was the big brass lock, and the willow pattern <laughs> My granddad, incandescent now, he quizzed the boy's intent. As to why they bombed the front door lock, knowing what to him it meant. Could they not see with their own two eyes an entry to secure that a flimsy timber tongue latch held the unlocked kitchen door? <laughs> this news soon spread like wildfire all around the whole southeast. When Grandad saw the lighter side, his support for home rule ceased. <laughs> Lord George recalled the government cruel tactics to devise, but, but the rebel heart in Wexford men, it helped to galvanize. <laughs>